students so far I have discussed about some advanced linear programming applications. In this lecture, I am going to explain distribution and network models. I am going to discuss about two important problems, one is on transportation problem, another one is on transshipment problem. These two problems are very useful in some modeling the supply chain. What is the supply chain? A supply chain describes the set of all interconnected resources involved in producing and distributing a product. For instance, a supply chain for automobile could include raw material producers, automotive part suppliers, distribution centers for storing automobile automotive parts, assembly plant and car dealers. So, what is the supply chain? There may be a supplier, there is a manufacturer, there is a warehouse, there is a retailer. So, supplier, manufacturer, warehouse and retailer, okay. this is the supply chain. So, in the each entity is connected by network. Okay. So, modeling this network is an important uh, application of linear programming problem. Here we uh, in the supply chain network model, all the materials need to be produced, a finished automobile must follow through a supply chain. All materials needed to produce, a finished automobile must flow through the supply chain. In general, supply chains are designed to satisfy customer demand for a product at minimum cost. So, the distribution network has to reduce overall supply chain cost. Those that control the supply chain must make decisions such as where to produce the product, how much should be produced and where it should be sent. Okay. Here the where it should be sent and important decisions of supply chain network models. Two specific types of problems common in supply chain models that can be solved using linear programming are transportation problems and transshipment problems. Now, we will discuss about transportation problem. The transportation problem arises frequently in planning for the distribution of goods and services from several supply chain location to several demand locations. Typically, the quantity of goods available at each supply chain location that is origin is limited and the quantity of goods needed at each several demand locations or uh, destinations is known. The usual objective in transportation problem is to minimize the cost of shipping goods from origins to the destinations. Now, I have taken a, a sample a network problem, this example is taken from Anderson et al book. There are three supply nodes x, y, z plant for example. There are three, uh, four demand nodes distribution centers A, B, C, D. So, the plant 1 having the capacity of 5000 units, plant 2 6000, plant 3 2500. The distribution requirement is having, uh, the, the distribution center is having the demand of 6000 for node B it is a 4000, 2000, 1500. So, what is the objective of the transportation problem is? how many units has to be picked from each plant and distributed to satisfy the demand. Here the unit transportation cost is given. Here the decision variable is when I say x i j, how many units has to be picked from each plant. I represents the origin, J represents the destinations. So, Xij is the decision variables 
And one more thing the distance we are not considering only the transportation cost is given. It indirectly capture the distances. Now there are four destinations A, B, C, D there is a demand for each destination. So, the total demand is 13,500. The transportation cost per unit is given. For example, this from origin x to destination a unit transport cost is 3. So, this we can say C11, C12, C13, C14. So, this we can call it is C21, C22, C23, C24. So, C31, C32, C33, C34. Like this, this is the unit transportation cost. The transportation problem can be represented in the form of network. To obtain a feasible solution, the total supply must be greater than or equal to the total demand. The supply should be greater than the demand. In case this condition is not satisfied, you will get a infeasible solution. Now, what kind of decision variables? X i j, as I told you, number of units shipped from origin i to destination j, okay, where i represents m origin n destination. The first subscript identify from node of the corresponding arc, the second subscript identify identifies the two node of the arc. So, first we will write an objective function. So, this I can write it this is x 1 1, this is x 1 2, this is x 1 3, this is x 1 4. Okay. Similarly, I can write for other nodes also. So, here 3 x 1 1 the unit cost is 3 number of quantity shipped is x 1 1. So, 3 x 1 1 plus 2 x 1 2 plus 7 x 1 3 plus 6 x 1 4. Okay. From the node 2 it is x 2 1 x 2 2 x 2 3 x 2 4 multiply by corresponding unit transportation cost then 3 1 3 2 3 3 3, 4 multiplied by corresponding unit transportation cost. So, the objective function is minimization of the cost that has to be minimized. The next constraint which we have to write is supply constraint. What is the supply? This portion is the supply. Okay. So, the number of units going away from each node. So, x 1 1, x 1 2, x 1 3, x 1 4. Okay. This is x 1 1, x 1 2, x 1 3, x 1 4. Okay. So, that cannot exceed 5000 units because its capacity is only 5000. Similarly, for second x 2 1, 2 2, 2 3, 2 4, 6000. Then 3 1, 3 2, 3 3, 3 4, 2500. So, when you add total supply 13,500, total demand 10,000, 12,000, 13,500. Now, the supply equal to demand, so we can proceed with the problem. Sometime there may be a mismatch that I will explain you that is a special cases of transportation problem. The next is the demand constraint. So, here demand is 6000. What are the different possibility x 1 1, x 2 1, x 3 1 equal to 6000, 4000, 2000, 1500. Here it should be equal to sign because demand must be satisfied. Now, I am going to solve this transportation problem with the help of solver. So, you can see here I have entered the origin and the destination origins are x, y, z destinations are a, b, c, d. On the supply side I have written total supply and the demand side I have written the total demand. Okay. Now, uh, at the bottom where I am going to get the answer that is origin I have written, uh, destination also I have written you see the formula of f x 
sorry f 17. So, sum of that row the bottom one uh, f 18 sum of this row. Similarly, look at this uh, b 20 b 20. So, sum of this column then c 20 sum of this column ok. At the bottom I have written the b 18 suppose this value should be b 8 what is the b 8 that is the total demand. So, the the column sum should be equal to total demand. Similarly, the row sum should be equal to F 5 that is your total supply. So, this is the model for uh, transportation problem. Now, I will go to data then solver. Look at this, this is a minimization problem. So, objective function look at the uh, changing variables so that is B 17 to E 19. So, you have to select B 17 to E, e 19 at a time. Then I have written the demand constraint and the supply constraint. When I solve it, now I am getting the value you see that B 17 3500. So, what is the meaning from the origin x to destination a I should transport 3 3500 units from origin x to origin destination b I have to transfer 1500 ok. So, again if I press uh, control tilde again I can see the actual value you see that my uh, you see f 17 to f 19 my supply constraint f 17 to f 19. So, my supply constraints are satisfied. Similarly, when you look at b 22 to e 22 my demand constraints also satisfied. This is the one way to solve the LP model with the help of Excel. This is the easiest way to interpret. But there is another way you can solve the same problem just by writing all the equations like a LP formulations then you can solve it that I am going to show you. Now, I have formulated from our, our uh, LP formulations like our simple linear programming problems. So, I have written the decision variables coefficient objective function, the value of objective function I have written the right hand sides and the, uh, the constraints and resources utilized. Now, when I go to data solver, so when I solve it it is a minimization problem. So, when I solve it the total transportation cost is 39500. So, how many number of units I have to transport from x 1 to 1, uh, uh, x 1 to 1 3500, 1 to 2 1500 and so on. So, here what we are learning here the same problem we can make an excel model or we can we can solve it like a simple uh, LP formulations and solving the equations. Now, I have brought the uh, screenshot of our uh, excel model. So, here we can see this is our given problem the bottom where you can get the answer here 3500, 1500. So, this is our total supply from x, total supply from y, total supply from z this is our demand. So, this is satisfied. What is the value of our optimal uh, objective function 39500? When we solve this problem in the form of uh, equations here also we are getting 39500 and we are getting various uh, cell values that is nothing but from uh, origin 1 to destination 1 this many units has to be transported. So, by solving the second method that is taking the equation solving with the help of excel is somewhat easier than the, the previous method. Those who are not having any knowledge on excel they can go for simply solving the LP model instead of going the, the previous method which I have told you. Now, I have brought the solution to the transportation problem. So, what we are getting from C x 1 to 2 sorry x 1 to 1 3500 units x 1 to 2 1500. So, now 5000 is satisfied. So, 2500, 4500 again 6000 yes from destination 2 
two uh, two we have to transport two thousand five hundred two to three two thousand two to four one thousand five hundred from three to one two thousand five hundred that's all so this is our solution to our transportation problem now we'll see the different variants variations in our transportation problem there are four type of variation is possible one is total supply not equal to total demand in our problem which you have discussed here supply equal to demand the next one is sometime the objective function may be maximization type that time what to do the next one there may be a root capacity or root minimum sometime there may be unacceptable routes so how to handle this problems that i will see we will see now the first one is when the total supply exceeds total demand here we are getting 13500 here also 13500 sometime what will happen here the supply is more demand is less then there is no problem if the total supply exceeds total demand no modification in lp formulation is necessary so what will happen if it is excess supply that will appear as a slack in our lp model that is the materials which are not transported so slack of any particular origin can be interpreted as a unused supply or amount not shipped from the origin another situation situation may come the total supply is less than the total demand okay so we are seeing this this is 30500 13500 sometimes see this is 13000 for example in this case the right hand side is 30 13500 but in the left sorry sorry this is only 13000 not 13500 here if the total supply is less than the total demand so lp model of a transportation problem will not have a feasible solution if the supply is less then the demand there won't be any feasible solution how to handle this we have to add a dummy origin with the supply equal to the difference between total demand and total supply so here we have to add a dummy origin so 13500 minus 13000 so this capacity is a 500 when you add a dummy variable then lp model will have feasible solution so when you add a dummy variable this has to be connected with all the destination nodes with the zero unit transportation cost so a zero cost per unit is assigned to each arc leaving from the dummy origin so that the value of the optimal solution for the revised problem will represent shipping cost for the unit actually shipped in reality no shipments actually will be made from the dummy origin we have added so that to balance the problem so suppose if you are getting some solution here so that is the shortage for this problem that is this when the optimal solution is implemented the destination showing shipments being received from the dummy origin will be the destinations experience experiencing a shortfall or unsatisfied demand suppose if you are getting say x say 41 say say 20 that mean this is unit of unsatisfied another situation maximization in some transportation problem the objective function is to find a solution that maximizes the profit or revenue okay so using the value of the profit or revenue per unit cost as coefficient in the objective function we simply solve maximization maximization rather than minimization so this change does not affect the constraint root capacity for example say origin 3 to 1 had a capacity of only 1000 units because of limited space availability on its normal mode of transportation so what you have to do we have to add a constraint x31 should be less than or equal to 1000 sometime there may be a 
committed capacity. So, that time should write for example, x to 2 it should be greater than 2000 would guarantee that the previously committed order from 2 to delivery of at least 2000 units would be maintained in the optimal solution. So, this is the way to handle root capacity and root minimum. Sometime there may be unacceptable routes. Finally, establishing a route from every origin to every destination may not be possible. To handle the situation, simply drop the corresponding arc that means, you drop the decision variables from the network and uh, solve by LP that is a way to handle unacceptable route. So, this is a generic form of our LP transportation problem. What is? It is a minimization problem. Here the supply constraints are less than or equal to type, the demand constraints are equal to demand. This is the general LP model for transportation. Now, we will be discussing the extension of your transportation problem called a transshipment problem. What is the meaning of transshipment? Previously, there was an origin, there is a destination. Now, in between there may be a, a temporary location, for example, warehouse. So, instead of sending goods from this point to this point, first it will reach from here, from there it will be sent to the demand node. So, this kind of uh, problem is called a transshipment node, okay, transshipment problems. So, uh, the transshipment problem is extension of transportation problem in which intermediate nodes referred to as transshipment node are added to account for locations such as warehouses. In this, a more general type of distribution problem, shipments may be made between any pair of three general types of nodes like it can go directly from origin nodes or shipments can be done from the transshipment node or the, the shipment can be done in the destination node. Okay. Three possibility of distribution is possible. Now, we will take one, uh, we'll tell, uh, we'll take one example, there is a warehouse, there are two warehouses there that is going to be act as a transshipment node. Okay. So, the retail outlet, the unit transportation is given from W1 to D1, it is a two unit, uh, two unit is the transportation cost, no. The cost is 2 dollar per unit, W1 to D2, D2 represents the destination nodes, 6 dollar per unit and so on. So, this is unit transportation cost, which one? This one. Between warehouse that is the transshipment node to the demand, between the supply node and the transshipment node, there is another transshipment cost. Okay. So, we are going to use this transshipment node while writing the objective function. Now, this is a full picture. What is this? So, there is a supply node S1, X2, S2, there is a warehouse 1, warehouse 2, there is a D1, D2, D3, D4. Okay. So, this is your transshipment node as usual what we have done it in the transportation problem. First, we will write the supply constraint. What is the supply constraint? So, x13, x14, this is 13 less than or equal to 600, x23, x24 less than or equal to 400. Then the demand constraint x35, see this 35. 36, 37, 38. Okay. Now, when you look at here this point, what are the way to receive the products x35, x45? Here, this is this, this is x45. This one x 3 6 x 4 6 equal to 150. 
x37, x47, 350. So, similarly other one, it is a demand constraint. Now, this is an important additional constraint which you are adding. What is this? The number of units shipped out should be equal to number of units shipped in. Okay. So, like we can say output should be equal to input number of units which are shipped out should be equal to number of units shipped in. So, when you look at this node number of units shipped out x 35, 36, 37, 38 shipped in 1, 2 not 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. So, that should be equal okay. that is what uh, everything brought on the left hand side. Similarly, for the node 4 also this is written. So, the transshipment node is similar to transportation problem only some additional constraint is added that is called a transshipment constraint. This is our complete transshipment problem. Now, we will solve this transshipment problem with the help of Excel. So, I have formulated a LP model where I have written the decision variables and objective functions. So, I am going to solve it go to data solver. Look at this, this is minimization problem and there are uh, two constraint which are equal to type in nature that constraints are called transshipment constraints. Okay. Then when I solve it, now I am getting the total transportation cost is 4600. And then, and I am getting the value how many unit has to be uh, transported from destination 1, 2, 3, 550, 1, 2, 4, 50, and so on. Now, we will see the solution for our LP model. So, this was the our solution. The in this transshipment method, the total transportation cost is 4600. Here we are getting how much unit has to be shipped from each node to another node. Now, here I have brought the solution. So, this is 550 unit has to be transferred from 1 to 3. So, 1 to 4, 50 and so on all the values are given. Now, I have brought the uh, solution for this transshipment problem. What the solution says from 1 to 3 you have to ship 550 units, 1 to 4, 50 units. 3 to 5, 200 units and so on. Now, we look at the small modification in our transshipment problem. Suppose the company says that they want to ship certain product from source to destination 8. So, this line. So, I have added a new line. Okay. There is a transportation cost also is there. So, when you go for a direct shipment instead of going via this transshipment node what will happen to our total transportation cost. So, what we have to do in our existing problem you have to add a new constraint a new variable that is x 2 8. This x 2 8 has to be added in every constraint and in the objective function. So, when you resolve it so this is our modified transshipment problem see that uh, this x 28 is added here, 28 is added here, 28 is added here, 28 is added here. So, when you resolve it, now what is happening? Your objective function is increasing. So, when you go for direct shipment, there is an increase in transportation cost. So, in this lecture, I have explained the transportation problem. I have formulated the problem, then I have solved with the help of solver, then I have interpreted the result. Then we have seen the special cases of transportation problem. After that I have introduced a, a extension of transportation problem that is called a transshipment problem. That problem also I have solved with the help of Excel. The next class we will discuss about the new topic called assignment problem. Thank you very much.